Hi everyone. Thank you so much for checking my channel again or welcome if you are new. In this video, I'm going to draw animals on two pages in my sketchbook. And the idea is that I'm going to draw them from different angles and uh, you can just follow the process. And in the meantime, I'm going to share some tips. So hopefully that's helpful for you. Number one is tips for coming up with ideas for your sketchbook. Number two is drawing a subject from different angles. And number three is how to build up your layers with different material. On Patreon, I will explain in a longer video what kind of materials I'm using and how I'm fixing mistakes. So check that if you want to see longer videos. Okay, let's start with number one. Okay, maybe you have no idea what to draw or you're out of inspiration and you just got a new sketchbook. Well, I have a couple of lists that I can always check if I need it and especially when I'm not at home traveling or waiting somewhere. So the, the back of my sketchbook is oftentimes a place where I write down my notes and ideas and I've made an animal inspiration list. So if I'm out of ideas, I can easily check that. Um, but it's also some sort of bucket list because there are uh, a lot of animals I've never drawn and I really love animals. I like to study them and especially when we are drawing, we are looking at something better, you know? So they come in lots of shapes, have a lot of texture and expressions that I can use in my sketches. So yeah, maybe you have something that you are interested in and you can make a list out of that. So. On the other page, for example, I have some shorter lists of other e ideas that I like. Um, for example, nature objects, I could call it things because it are undefined nature things that I like. For example, uh, feathers or nests, uh, shells, skulls, and so on. I also have a list with people to draw. Um, maybe you've heard about the 100 hat challenge. Uh, I would really like to do something like that, but in a different way. So not with the Pinterest images, but with different age groups, uh, starting from baby to older people and variations of that. So you could make a list out of everything that you like and that you are interested in, because I think that's what's going to motivate you. Okay, and for my reference images, I've got my reference images of these sugar gliders from Instagram, actually. And um, I think for just sketching and practicing, it's really nice. Uh, I used to draw a lot in the train and um, I realized that it's perfect for finding different shots of the same animal. So I basically just searched on Instagram for images of the same animal. If you search for hashtag uh, cockatoo, for example, or bird or something else, you might find a page of a person that has an Instagram page of their pet. And for reference, that's great because they will share uh, pictures from their pet from different angles. So that's really nice. I will ask for permission, tell them in a message, and oftentimes people are surprised and happy. When I'm drawing animals a couple of times from different directions, it really, really helps me to understand their movement, structure and volume uh, of different body parts. So, uh, for example, birds, if they spread their wings, it's a whole different story than when they keep their wings close to their body. So. Um, Maybe in one picture I can't see how everything is connected and what oftentimes happens is that you are going to make up your own reality, you know? So that's why I think it's so important to draw something from different angles. And with that being said, let's talk about how to build up your layers. I always start with light lines and add stronger lines and shadows later. Now. On this page, I actually didn't add a lot of um, shadow at all, but I used these different materials together and uh, some of them are heavier and thicker than the others. So I think in the beginning, when you start to draw, it's nice if you have some, some space for errors. So I always like to draw with lighter lines and I used a red pencil for this. I started with the figures and I added the background later. Um, of course, you can start um, anywhere you like. 
Um, but with painting, I usually work the other way around. So the background first and then uh, the figures. Now you can see that I already drew the little sugar glider, but I sort of freestyled the background with these flowers and I, I draw them for my imagination. So this way it flows better together, uh, I think. And um, so I start with the light lines. Once I know where my shapes are, I add more stronger lines to the drawing. This way I can still erase some things and change the position. So for example, here I changed the pose because I liked it more when he still was hanging out of the nest. By the way, let me know in the comments if you also like to use some accent colors in your sketchbook or if you like to mix different materials in one sketch or uh, do you like to keep it black and white. Um, and also, if this is helpful for you, let me know what you are going to try out. I always spend a little bit more time on faces because that's the part where your eye is drawn to and the rest of the drawing can be a little bit more rough, I think. Um, I like a bit of movement in the drawing. Okay, after adding a bit more shadow and volume, I like to add some color to the flowers with the Tombow brushes. I actually ordered more colors today because I'm a pencil hoarder, but look at how smooth these brush strokes are. And if you add another layer, it gives a, a bit of a darker color, just like watercolor would. Um, so you saw that I got these pictures from uh, Instagram. I will insert her page here. And what I wanted to do is draw these animals a couple of times and I could fit uh, four animals on this spread. So what I did, I tried to look for different poses from the front, from the side and maybe from the back because that way I have a complete study of this animal. And I like to create a story around them like they are sleeping or they are looking somewhere or uh, sitting inside of something. Now, for example, she had these, uh, these coconut homes <laughs> and my idea was to make a nest instead of a coconut. And um, yeah, by looking at those, her pictures, I created my own story. Everything that you see here, just take it as an, um, an open idea or a suggestion, something that you could do. But remember, there are no rules. I really live by this. You know, what you see here is completely me self-thought messing around you know and um yeah sometimes i hear people say you you also heard things like that that uh you shouldn't do this or you have to do that and uh i'm totally against it <laughs> no but i feel like you have to do you and what feels good for you you know you're going to do that anyway if you uh, feel like you're drawn to a certain material or uh, to a certain style just go and um, develop that for yourself yeah and of course i will link the materials that i use in the description down below and if you are going to draw these animals as well or just other uh, elements from from this page let me know on instagram or patreon what you have made because of course i would love to see it after you made those outlines and you want to color it you really have to erase those sketch lines if you don't want them to show up because otherwise uh, the tombow brush will sort of like fixate those sketch lines or if you also if you do that with watercolor then you will still still see those uh, sketch lines so it's important to uh, create the outlines, erase the sketch lines, and then color it. I really want to make more uh, draw with me videos where I sketch a subject or an animal a couple of times on the spread. And of course, you can always give me suggestions, but I want to make something that is easy to follow and that, uh, so, yeah, that I can give more tips. And by the way, if you think, what do I hear in the background? It's like someone is snoring. Uh, yes, you got that right. Sometimes there are dogs uh, sleeping next to me, just like now. So now you know. And uh, yeah, sometimes they snore so loud. <laughs> but I hope it's relaxing for you. I will show most because, oh, he's so cute. The sketch is completed and here's the final result.
This uh, sketch spread together with two other pages for my sketchbook are available in my store. So I have the, uh, the sugar gliders, then I have the monkeys and I have uh, the, yeah, the Oranda fishes. I've ordered different frames and I think it's nice to frame them without the, the passepartout because that way it really looks like the original spread for my sketchbook. And I have a moleskin sketchbook and um, these have um, round corners and a bit of tinted paper. So even uh, the gicle print looks uh, quite similar with those round corners. I also have a gold frame as an option and uh, it's unbreakable plexiglass. So I wanted that for shipping internationally. And honestly, I can't see the difference between the original and the print. So yeah, I love the quality of the Gicle print. We've had very warm, sunny days in the Netherlands. So uh, I love how this afternoon sunlight hits the gold on the pages, as you can see here. So I hope that you liked this video. Uh, it was quite intense to edit again, but I'm getting quicker. So I want to make more content for uh, for YouTube. If you want, you can subscribe to my channel. And of course, if you like it, give me a thumbs up because that's good for the algorithm and more people can watch it. Comment down below if you have any questions and I would also like to know what was the most useful tip for you if you found any. And I also have a gift card option in my shop, so that's new. Uh, so if you want to let someone else choose, I have that option now. Okay, if you want to follow more of my work, you can find all the links down below this video. Um, I'm most active on Instagram, also on Facebook, and uh, you can check out the Patreon page. So yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for watching and keep sketching, keep painting and until next time. Bye bye.